Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Wednesday, September 26, 2018. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Honorable Mark Brantley attended the 6th Caricom Japan meeting within the margins of the high-level week of the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly. The meeting presented an opportunity for Caricom and Japan to discuss critical issues of mutual interest, in particular the state of affairs in Asia and the implications for the Caribbean region. The CARICOM foreign ministers also sought Japan's support in the advocacy of the development of disaster risk reduction framework as well as the adverse effects of climate change. After the recently concluded first intergovernmental conference to begin negotiations on the international legally binding treatment, the ministers also discussed the sustainable use of marine resources. Minister Mark Brantley was asked to provide brief closing remarks during which he urged the Japanese delegation to advocate for the Caribbean in policy spaces that address issues of de-risking and correspondent banking and thanked the Japanese government for its continued support to the development of the Caribbean community. St. Kitts and Nevis established diplomatic relations with Togo yesterday, 25th of September 2018, as it seeks to expand its diplomatic footprint on the African continent. Minister Bantley engaged Professor Robert Dossi, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Cooperation and African Integration, during a brief signing ceremony. The ministers discussed deepening relations between both countries as St. Kitts and Nevis continues its push for greater South-South cooperation and greater engagement with the African continent. The ministers also discussed the possibility of signing a mutual visa waiver agreement between St. Kitts and Nevis and Togo. Togo is a country of 7.6 million people located in West Africa with an economy thriving in mining and agricultural production. The divisional commanders over districts A, B, and C have been analyzing the crime trends in the Federation and have re-strategized their operations plan with results already being seen. Superintendent Cromwell Henry, who is responsible for Division A, says his division has been divided into zones, adding that the objective of the strategy is to deter criminals and reassure the public. There is much fear of crime among the public, which is worse than crime itself. Therefore, to reassure residents while deterring criminals, the division has been divided into six zones and assigned a marked police vehicle with at least two officers to each zone. They are required to patrol their zones, stopping at intervals to conduct vehicle checkpoints or foot patrols to interact with residents, Superintendent Henry says. In Division B, Superintendent Travis Rogers says his division is engaged in new numerous operations of several types. These entail search operations on houses and vehicles, as well as stop and search exercises. On the traffic control side, the division is continuing to conduct vehicle checkpoints and have been manning the roundabout at Molyneux on a daily basis. Mobile and foot patrols are done daily and include the assistance of the St. Kitts Nevis Defense Force, who have been helping with nightly mobile and foot patrols in the division. The anti-gang task force also operates in the division and have been dealing mainly with gang-related activities. Vehicle checkpoints as well as stop and search exercises are also being done in Division C in Nevis. Soldiers from the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force have been assisted with mobile and foot patrols as well. These activities are part of the crime prevention strategy being implemented by Superintendent Lyndon David. Other activities included the strategy in the strategy are drone surveillance, visiting business establishments, sharing crime prevention tips and vigorously enforcing the traffic laws such as those against heavy tint, unlicensed vehicles, driving without a valid driver's license and driving without insurance. Superintendent David says we must first thank God for his mercy and protection and also to the Nevis Island Administration, the officers of the Nevis Division, the contingent of soldiers from the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force, as well as the residents and businesses in Nevis for their contribution. Still to come, 
Climate change and NCDs are inextricably linked, Prime Minister Harris tells the international community. The details after this break. Uwali, the Queen of the Caribbeans. Bathed by its crystal shores is the Caribbean's best kept secret. Nevis is known for its rich culture, which remains entrenched in the island's everyday life. We boast of having the Caribbean's greatest summer festival, Culturama. The birthplace of Alexander Hamilton, my little 36 square mile island, is the home of the Bath Hotel, which is the first built hotel in the Caribbean. Don't forget to take a dip in the therapeutic Bath Springs. Take a few minutes to trot down to the ever-famous Sunshine's Bar and drink a world-renowned killer bee. Live Nevis naturally by exploring the magnificent waterfalls and hiking to the top of our 32-32 Nevis Peak. Our lush vegetation and landscape deems a visit here the perfect escape. Nevis, Queen of the Caribbean. Welcome back. The Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris, used his presentation at the launch of the Defeat NDC Partnership Initiative at the United Nations headquarters on Monday, September 24th, to draw the international community's attention to the inseparable link between climate change and the increased incidences of non-communicable diseases. Addressing a joint media briefing on non-communicable diseases following the Defeat NCD Partnership launch, Prime Minister Harris said, stated that climate change is a major hindrance on the Caribbean region's economies, which also undermines our ability to live up to the financing obligations that are required if we are to defeat NCDs. The St. Kitts and Nevis Prime Minister said the matter of climate change and its inextricable link to NCDs will be discussed at length when the Pan American Health Organization PAHO, jointly with the World Health Organization WHO, convened the Caribbean meeting of the geographically dispersed three global conference on health and climate change with a special focus on small island developing states, SIDS. That meeting, scheduled to take place in St. George's, Grenada from October 16th to 17th, 2018, will be attended by ministers of health, ministers of environment, partner agencies and stakeholders from Caribbean SIDS who will discuss and identify actions and indicators for an action plan on health and climate change to be implemented in the Caribbean. Dr. Harris continued, climate change impacts negatively on our own ability to move forward, to advance our development agenda, and like the question of NCDs, they are reflections of the symptoms of the failure in the development paradigm. And so for all of these things to be successfully addressed, we think that we need a new world order of cooperation and development among the world entities. In light of this, Prime Minister Harris encouraged all relevant parties to support the objectives of the Defeat NCD Partnership, which seeks to help tackle this significant global health problem. The partnership was launched on the margins of the 73rd session of the UN General Assembly. Its initial focus will be on diabetes and hypertension, with expansion to other NCDs in due course. The Honorable Prime Minister's agenda at the United Nations continued yesterday, Tuesday, September 25th, with his participation in the general debate of the UN General Assembly. Prime Minister Harris is also expected to attend a high-level meeting on the fight against tuberculosis today, Wednesday, September 26th, 2018. I want to give commendation to the Social Policy and Sustainable Human Development Unit and the Department of Youth for spearheading this initiative. So I really want to say a special thanks to Mr. Pemberton and his staff, as well as Ms. Claxton and her staff for collaborating so well in ensuring that we have this debating series. Through these debates, I am confident that our students who are our leaders of tomorrow 
will be enriching their debating skills. And not only that, apart from enriching their debating skills, they will also be enhancing their preparation skills for the debate, which would include research, and teamwork. Minister of Youth in the Nevis Island Administration, the Honorable Eric Evelyn, speaking at the Independence 35 inter-high school debate that took place at the Nevis Performing Arts Center, NEPAC, on Saturday, 22nd September. Evelyn said these debates will prepare and better equip the students for when they enter into the Nevis Sixth Form College and participate in debating competitions. So I want the students who will be taking part in these competitions to take the experience very seriously. And I'm sure that the experience for you, irrespective of the team that wins the competition tonight, I'm sure the experience will be a rewarding one. I am also happy that persons from the community are here to witness the debate. And for the persons who are here to witness, as well as those who will be viewing the debate a little later on on television, you yourselves will be learning more about the sustainable development goals. The winners of the first debate, the Charlestown Secondary School, will compete against the Nevis Sixth Form College on Saturday, 29th September at NEPAC, beginning at 7 p.m. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Thank you for viewing.